take 500. Action! Slave labor, that's all we have, so. Let's go. It's funny. Hey everyone, our next major milestone will be installing our window. This is a big task for us and so there's going to be several weekends in order to get these suckers in. What we're going to try and do is give you a quick little intro about the windows we have for our bus and what we've been doing this weekend in order to prepare for the actual installation. So let's give you a little bit of a background on how these windows came to be in our bus. So it actually started at the very beginning of the project, so well over a year ago, and Bjorn was doing a ton of research. Um, we were trying to figure out a design for how much light we wanted to have coming into our bus, and we were looking at double pane windows and contacted a couple of people. It turns out those are really expensive. So after a little bit more research, we found a place nearby it's kind of this Disneyland for RV parts. It's crazy. It turns out they had a ton of RV windows. They came with the clamp rings when we bought them and it was such a great deal. Each one costs 49 bucks. We have 10 of them so being able to get bus windows for under $500 was huge for us. So we jumped at that opportunity from the early on and that's how we've had these windows in our bus for so long so naturally they collect a lot of dust for us so not only do they need a little cleaning from sitting around our bus and our storage bays down below but you know they are used RV windows so they're not perfect but they're gonna function the way that we want them to and you know, there's a couple of dings on the outside frame, but for the most part, all the actual glass was in really good shape, so it worked out great for us. So let's take a step back and talk about why we went with RV windows in the first place. Well, before we had, the windows that we had were a lot bigger, um, but the main issue with those were there was no screen in them. So not only did the old windows not have a screen, but in order to open them, you had to prop them up and away from the bus, and that was really hard to do because those things were heavy. Not a good option for us. Oh, and before I forget, these windows also have that same option where they do open up and away from the bus, but that's strictly for emergency purposes. These windows have a lot more functionality. They were within our price range, and so that's why we went with them. So you're probably wondering why we decided to go with 10 windows, and that's a great question. For two main reasons, one being the outside look. Uh, we started out with 14 big bus windows, and going from 14 down to 10 still kept a very uniform look. It didn't change the look of it being a bus, because we decided that we didn't really want to convert the bus into looking like an RV. So. In order to keep that whole uniform look going, we kept the same shape for all of our windows and they're all the same height, so it gives it a really nice clean look going down the side of the bus. And the second consideration was for how the overall look and feel would be on the inside of the bus. So we already have a really tiny space, having 10 windows, four on this side and six on this side. It really helps to keep this small space nice and open, brings in a lot of natural light. And no matter where you are in the bus, you're always two feet away from a window. So that more or less sums up our decision-making process and the windows we went with for our bus. If you have any more questions uh, that you'd like to ask us, leave us a comment below and we'd be happy to answer. For the actual window installation process, that is going to take several weekends to knock out. We're going to do our best to give you updates on every stage that we accomplish. And that's going to start with what we accomplished this weekend. We're finally thinking about plans for the window installation, but before we do that, we want to make sure that our corners are nice and cornered off. So what we've been doing for that is using these wall edge beads. We have been simply, in order to measure them and install them, we're taking the easy route, just marking off where we want to cut. 
We take some tin snips and it's pretty easy to make a cut. Just kind of get in there and every now and again it's important to make sure that it doesn't bend because then you don't want to cut. There we go. So you just make two snips, one on each side, and then bends in half like that. And bam, you've got yourself a new piece. The next step in our process that we've been doing is in order to mount these, we just get some standard construction glue, put them on both faces, lay them down, and then we've just been um, securing that with these tiny nails. So once those are installed, kind of just let that sit for a little bit. And then because the corner beads has a natural recess just right after the corner, the typical application with the edge beads are to mount them and then fill the remainder of the recess with drywall compound and that just flushes out and makes the surface an even surface. It hides the metal and it's used to fill and feather out the edge of the wall. What we've been doing because our application is a little different, started out using wood filler and once we did one wall and we saw how much it required to fill it from side to side, we realized we'd be using a lot of that and that it would add up really quick cost-wise. So we made a switch over to using all-purpose putty in which we got a giant gallon for a really good price and that's what we plan on using for filling and feathering out the edge here. And so we're going to get going on that and then show you what the end result looks like. So now you know how the corners around the windows are being done. Let's show you how we're prepping the metal frame for the windows before the installation of the windows themselves. So as you probably know, RV windows, they get uh, installed. You, you put the window in from the outside and on the inside you have a clamp ring that goes on. And you put screws around the perimeter of that clamp ring that go into the window that's on the exterior. And it kind of pulls it together and holds the window in place. So, we got the uh, clamp rings that they came with and we decided not to change those out. What that meant is we, didn't, we weren't able to install the windows on the actual finished thickness of our wall because it is much thicker than what the clamp rings would allow us to install for the windows. So so we, that's why all of our windows are slightly recessed the need for the windowsill and everything. We also thought that it was a nice feature. If we ever had to do it again, probably wouldn't because it's a nightmare to do, trust me. But, be that as it may, we're at our uh, final stages of the window install process. So, we need to add a little bit more thickness and make it look finished on the interior for the clamp ring. So what are we going to do? Well, we've got the plywood, the same plywood we have on the walls, half inch thick, and we've ripped a few pieces to cover the face of the uh, interior window frame. So what's going to happen is this gets a small amount of glue on the back and then we'll take our metal self-drilling screws and we'll put a couple of them in hold it in place and the clamp ring will be installed right over that. Of course, being the bonehead that I am, I made a mistake. <laughs> Make a lot of them these days, but I made a mistake with the corners. So we have a certain radius around the window. Uh, of course the windows are oval, so there's the radius on the corners. The clamp ring needs to have uh, continuous contact all the way around, and because I just ripped out rectangles, it left the whole corner open. So there wasn't anything to have the clamp ring grab onto. Unfortunately, it took me installing a set of these to realize that mistake. Since then, what I went ahead and did was uh, make corner pieces. So what we're going to be doing is installing these corner pieces separately. So we'll have one in each corner, we'll, like a so. 
and we'll take these pieces that I ripped and we'll just cut them down to fit in between the corner pieces. And it'll make it look like a solid oval window. When it's all done, of course, it, it will look kind of uh, pieced, you know, piecemeal at first, but because we're going to be doing this right after the edge bead, we'll put these pieces in, we'll take some of that wood filler or all-purpose putty that we bought, and we'll fill any gaps and fill the edges in the corner. We don't need to use an edge bead on the inside corners because they're, they're already pretty tight and they're easy to fill. They aren't as noticeable when it's finished. So what we'll do is we'll fill all the little openings along the edge, make it look really nice, do a light sand of everything, and primer it all. So it's all going to look like one solid piece. If you imagine the edge bead down here and up here and the wood around the interior, it should look pretty nice. We'll then be able to cut out the metal and try installing our windows. That's going to be scary, but exciting. So pretty soon we might actually be able to look out into the world, uh, you know, see the horizon and hear the uh, adventures beckoning, but for now we're stuck inside here and it's dark and dreary and slave labor. That's all we have. So that's how we're going to be doing this. We're going to continue working so we can show you the finished product. Enjoy. Let's check out the progress with prepping for the window installation. We've got the little corner pieces we described to you earlier that you know, I had made the mistake of uh, making this inside wood portion square instead of having a radius on each corner, which is needed for the clamp ring to have something to grab. So I went back and I made a little jig. I first fashioned uh, the shape out of cardboard, and then I made a little wood jig, and I was able to use this to trace all the different shapes in a big square piece of plywood. Unfortunately, I forgot that we used 5 8 inch plywood in the floor and half inch plywood in the wall. And we had a little bit of both laying around. So, of course, as life goes, I picked up the wrong thickness. So I cut a bunch of these out the wrong thickness. Bummer. Gives me something to do tonight and next Friday evening when I'm home not at the bus of course I'll be able to pull the jigsaw out and go to town but anyhow we did actually install the incorrect thickness and that's how we found out so we figured we'd show you anyhow you can see we've got the four pieces in each corner we will end up with a small section that fills up the middle as well, so it'll be behind the clamp ring, obviously, in the top and bottom, and on the left and right. So what we will, the end result will look like one piece of wood going all the way around. We're piecemealing it so that we didn't have to put a whole piece of wood on and then cut it out and have all that waste in the middle. So this way, we're reducing our waste and getting the same end result. So, we will correct that, hopefully reinstall this window, and then we'll go down and do the rest of the windows. You might also notice that the corners look a little different. So, we have been uh, applying the putty, as Lauren talked about, uh, in the corners. So, we have our metal edge bead down that's nailed and glued in place. And then we used uh, all-purpose putty. You might see in some of the pictures that there are there's a brown color as well. That's actually wood filler, pretty close to the same stuff. Both of it is uh, 3M Bondo all-purpose putty. Really, really good stuff. So you're able to lay that down and then sand it to really give it a nice finished look. This isn't our finished look, but it is looking more finished. So we will be putting the wood on and then applying another coat of putty making sure that all the gaps are filled and everything is as smooth as possible and we'll go back and we'll sand it with probably a uh, hundred grit sandpaper and then we'll feather the edges with 180 grit sandpaper so we'll show you what that looks like the goal will be a nice true corner so having a right angle 
and really making sure that there aren't any uh, undulations in the surface so when we go to paint you won't it, it'll look really nice the other small tidbit of information just while we're talking about all the things Bjorn does wrong because uh, <laughs> it happens to everybody I made the corners a little too tight we can always go back and shave some off once they're installed but because I have to remake them anyways I'm gonna change the radius a little bit you can see a little tiny bow in the metal and that's because even though it does fit it's too tight there's too much tension here it does flex so we would be able to technically install the window but you don't want that much tension on it so we'll loosen up a little bit so we'll change the radius just a little bit take off a little bit more material when I come to cut the next pieces and that should loosen it up and give us a little bit more play we're hoping that by not only getting the right thickness of plywood but also by having a little bit of play in the overall installation it should make the install of the window go a lot easier it is coming along we wanted to make sure and show you guys what we're doing and prove to you that we're still working on the bus because I know it's been a while uh, the finishing work is going slow but sure and although we won't be able to work much longer today because we have to head home soon uh, we wanted to show you where we're headed and the next stages should be pretty exciting once we get the windows going and we have of course yet to talk about the roof and the deck we plan on putting up there as many people have done and the process we're going to go about in doing that we will put the supports for the deck up at the same time we install the windows so you'll have a lot of neat stuff to view hopefully it all works out that's where we're at and check back in for the rest of the window prep and window installation we're looking forward to being able to bring that to you till next time yeah.